I'm sure there's a lot of you who want to know, how's Starlink working? I was so gung-ho about it in my last video about it. It's been a couple weeks. Do I still think it's good? Well, as you can see, I've changed my setup a bit. I'll talk about that too. First of all, how is Starlink working for me? And is it still the bee's knees like I thought it was the first time? Overall, the answer is yes. My speeds have been consistently good. I've since moved on to Deschutes National Forest. I'm camped near Sisters, Oregon. Performance has still been pretty good. It's an all new setup. Uh, first time I've moved with Starlink. I'm getting between 60 to 75 down, still 10 up, still plenty for all my needs so everything is still working just fine but as you can see I have my dishy mounted a completely different way than you saw in the last video let's check that out as you can see dishy is no longer on my roof it's at the top of a pole how did I do that before leaving Cottage Grove I got Starlink's pipe adapter which is this piece right here I'll zoom in on it it screws into the top of the pipe and the dishy will just uh, clip right into it the same way it clips into the X base it comes with. I have that attached to a, well, you can see the numbers right there. It's a one inch diameter by 10 foot long piece of galvanized steel pipe like they use for plumbing. I first tried it with my painter's pole that I've used to put ham radio antennas on in the past, and it worked, but the bottom half of it is fiberglass, and it was swaying around a bit in the breeze, in a light breeze, I should say. It was okay for the mild winds we had at my friend's place, but it was not going to hold up to the winds we get during an Arizona winter, which is what I was most concerned about. So I replaced the weak link, that painter's pole, with this galvanized pipe. And yeah, it sways just a little bit, but uh, it's not going anywhere. And Dishy is secured up there. Cable just goes right in the back door of the van. So uh, no issues there. Okay, so what about the bottom of it? That's where yet another piece that I got for ham radio. Now it comes in handy for Dishy. This is a piece of hardware I got from Go Vertical USA, and all it does is it slides into the receiver just like a trailer hitch, but on this end, the mast goes through it. It's got a couple of thumb screws that hold it into position. I guess you can see that. Yeah, they just uh, put pressure on it in two places and hold it in. That's the original thumb screw. I lost the second one, so I got this eye bolt which does basically the same thing. The thread is identical and I can turn it by hand, so no problem there. So with that, the whole setup just goes right into my trailer hitch. And you can probably hear the wind noise on the video, but I'm gonna leave it in so you can see. We've got a bit of wind and Dishy is barely moving, so we're good. I also wanna show you, like I said, I'm in a national forest. By nature, well, it's surrounded by trees, right? But I still have an excellent signal with Starlink because off to the north, I parked myself with an open field. So I have a beautiful view to the north. You can see that Dishy has oriented itself to point in that direction. And there we go. Yeah, Lister wants to be in the video too, right? Mr. always wants to be in the video and face smash the camera because that's his way. I see a lot of naysayers on the Facebook group say, no, unless you have a completely clear sky, it won't work. Well, not true. Yeah, you got to have a decent view of the sky, but it's imperfect here. I am literally parked right next to a tree and it's working fine because I'm on the proper side of the tree. You got to be smart about how you park and park and set up in such a way that 
you do have the view in the direction you need for Starlink. Fortunately, you don't have to park with your vehicle facing any particular direction because Dishy turns around, it'll swivel until it finds the right orientation. Then it'll tilt itself, everything will be fine. So you can park pointed any direction you want, which is nice. But whichever way you're pointed and wherever you're parked, you just gotta have that view. Now, admittedly, this still isn't much of a test as far as how good is Starlink in the forest because I, I picked a spot to camp that is super easy, super open. I probably will test that out at some point. I'll put myself in a more difficult place just to see how well or poorly it works. So that's my Starlink update. So far, so good. Still happy with it. Still think it's working out really well for me. It's not cheap, but I think it's gonna be worth the investment for me in the end. So I'll keep you posted with more videos as we go along progress I make on Starlink and any other changes I make in my setup, like with the mast or uh, anything else that uh, you might be able to find useful for your own setup. Until next time, see you down the road.